This is the TV Podcast. I'm Jason Snell, and my guest is Tim Goodman, head TV critic at The Hollywood Reporter. So I saw your thing today about um, about Stephen Colbert. I can't even say it now. Stephen Colbert is the official replacement. That was fast, wasn't it? That was really fast. It was uh, swift and decisive, and it was definitely, I think, um, the the best decision CBS could have ever made. Now, CBS doesn't mess around. They just they went for it. I, I thought they might like leave us hanging for six months, and instead, boom, just like that. Well, yeah, I mean, that, I think that there was some there was some history to that because they messed around with uh, you know Craig Ferguson in that uh, in that slot for the longest time. I mean, they were just you know there was a long tryout period. They had a number of different guests in and out, trying a guest host, and um, I was worried that they were going to do the same thing again with Letterman because you got to get it right. But I think that they knew. Uh, I mean, I saw something from uh, Nina Tassler, who's the the CBS Entertainment president, and she and she's told the Hollywood Reporter that like he was he was it. He was every, he was on everybody's list. He was the biggest name out there, and it was a it was like a. I think she said it was a once in a generation hire. Yeah, it. So many people mentioned his name, and there were reports last week, but so many people mentioned his name as an obvious candidate. And I heard from some people who said, well, you know, he does, a, he does that character, and they're, they're asking, can he work without the character, and does the character come along, and all that. And I was saying, no, he's kind of brilliant, and um, <laughs> and the character is – and and the thing that was the weirdest complaint that I heard was, why would he want to go? He's really in a comfort zone. And I'm like, I don't know. I would feel almost like I had done the character – for five years or whatever and and i felt like he he like has lots of talent that he can't display when he's in that character absolutely that's i think that has all i mean that's always been on my mind um i wrote uh, something similar to that today in that you know he is so incredibly talented the guy he's he's just he's so comedically gifted and he's so intelligent that you know you can't contain his mind in like a little box where he's you know, he came up where he's Bill O'Reilly, <laughs> right? Exactly. And he came up with uh, with this character at a time when that was still a big thing. Uh, he made it something far bigger and better than I ever thought it would, was going to be. Because at the beginning, I just thought, oh, this has got very, very little shelf life and not 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 long legs. But, um, you know, he he sort of imbibed that character and just made it you know, his own thing. And he's got the ice cream and he's got the commercials and he was bigger than the character. Um but in no way is the character bigger than than Stephen Colbert. No way. Yeah. Now you've you've interviewed him on numerous occasions, didn't you? Didn't you? Uh, weren't you the designated interviewer on stage for a a Colbert? Yeah. Event? When he, yeah, he had just started. Um, he it was before the ice cream came in, but he <laughs> he had uh, he said so he, he was, it was too bad famous. you could have gotten some ice cream out of it. Yeah, really, I could have got some uh, some <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was before he was super super uh, famous. But he had already taken over the Colbert Report, and then he, uh, you know, he so he could have sold out. Uh, uh, her, I interviewed him on stage for um, the San Francisco uh, uh, Arts and Lecture Series, and he could have sold out the Herbst Theater three or four times over. I, I mean, they were thinking about moving him to the Symphony Hall, which he would have sold out you know, a couple times over. So he was really popular back then. Um, but in, and that was a really long interview that I did with him, but I mean, you could just tell right then he is, uh, you know, and I had talked to him before and then backstage, et cetera. He's, he's so mentally uh, nimble and he just knows so many things. And he's like one of those, uh, rare comics. I mean, a, a lot of comics can do it. They can, they can riff really quickly, but he riffs intelligently and, uh, is smart enough to know that, Okay, if 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 I'm gonna make something, if I'm gonna make a retort come back at 100 miles an hour, anybody could do it this way. My my way of making it special is to throw a little a little bit more intelligence on it and then take it down this alleyway which you didn't expect. And I think that's really gonna be his um, his strong suit behind behind the desk because he can do he can do he can interview literally anyone. He can he can do Obama. He can do. Uh, I'm not sure they would have foreign dignitaries on, but he could do that. Um, and he can do comics, he can do uh, celebrities and have a ton of fun with them. He, he, there's just like nothing he can do. He can't do behind that desk. He's amazingly, um, pop culture literate in a way that I don't know how much of this is just the personality of him versus Dave Letterman or, and how much of it is, 
uh, generational, but mm-hmm. Colbert, I mean, like he's apparently a giant Lord of the Rings nerd and, and, you know, he, he, he has these cultural references. I, I get the feeling that, you know, David Letterman's um, cultural touchstones were comedy and sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and with Colbert, I feel like the guy's well read. He's, you know, he understands how the internet works. He's got all these other things that, that, and yet he's, 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 you know he's sharp and he's fast and he's funny. Um, but when you change hosts and you're you know you're going to get a host who's what twenty years younger, fifteen years younger than David Letterman, you're also picking up, you know this the, all of these other areas that I think Letterman, as much as I I dearly dearly love the guy, was just not into. I mean he was just not interested in a lot of a lot of stuff that Colbert seems to totally get and be comfortable with, which is really interesting to me. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing that really works in um... Colbert's favor and CBS's favor, for that matter, is that, you know, back when Dave was, I mean, I love Dave and he's, you know, he's a genius on, on himself and he's, he's legendary and he, he's just made such an impact. And, but the thing, he's just never been one of those guys. He has not embraced the internet. He has right. not really um, got into the cultural touchstones. And, you know, you, you think about it, Colbert is going to is going to put them on the map as far as being able to sort of riff on comic books and and sci-fi and all kinds of nerdist stuff that's really dominates the internet conversation. Uh he's like you said he's super pop culture savvy for for television shows and also music. He's a, he's a he's a huge fan of music right. of all kinds. Um I think he just he just fills in so many holes that uh that Letterman had as far as pop culture. Um, because we we took Dave for what he was, right? I mean, he was just he was in the in the beginning he was just goofy, uh, and then he was snarky and he was different, um, and then you know part of his shtick at the end was just being sort of cantankerous and and sort of above it all or just enduring it all, which is right. kind of like I think a lot of us were just sort of all enduring life many times when we watched <laughs> watched the show with him, you know, because he's he was that way. But um, you know, Colbert, he's he's he is so active. Um, in so many, he's got his hands in so many pies. It's going to be just, it's going to be great. I mean, you think about the, the, the gap, the lead that, that Kimmel has, um, for putting up those, uh, the videos that go viral. And if you think about the gap that, uh, 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 Fallon has, as far as his internet accessibility and Twitter and all the stuff where he's, he's very digital, that gap just completely closed down right when CBS hired hired Colbert so it's it's a it's a great move on that front do you think there's going to be any uh challenge with um with uh the audience uh separating that Stephen Colbert character that he played on Comedy Central I mean I, it sounds to me like over the next year and certainly when he's about to start at CBS there, there's going to be some work to do to try to like pull that apart because it is some people I think are going to be confused. I think some, you know, some people are like, I think of him as the conservative blowhard parody figure and that's not who he is going to be. So, you know, I, I wonder if there's going to be a challenge there. If, if uh, people are going to not want to accept him as a, as a regular guy, what, what do you think? Well, it, it, at the beginning, I thought, how could that even be? Because it's just, it's just, it's, it's almost like an actor playing a role. Um, and, you know, we don't, we don't expect that actor to play that role forever. We would expect him to play a lot of roles, and um, but yeah, I, there is a small part of me that gets it. I guess I, I'm I'm a little stunned that people associate him so closely together, but um, they do. It's an issue, and I think that what's going to happen is, you know, like I, over at the Hollywood Reporter, we've already started putting together pieces where you see him out of character, right. um, and I think that CBS will immediately have him. You know, he'll be on Letterman. He'll be he'll be all over the place. You know, he'll he'll pop up in things. Um, I think you'll see him booked on a lot of the the the, the morning shows uh, for for people to talk to. And um, who knows what? I mean, they might even have a CBS special where you get to to see him more. Um, he, there could even be a sixty minutes interview. They'll use right. whatever whatever they have uh, at their at their at their um, disposal to to get that out. But here's what I think. I think that. Even though right now at this minute we're thinking, okay, you got to uncouple that character from the man. I, I just know him as somebody who can do so many things that I think that with well within a year of him taking over, we'll look back and think that that it was crazy that we ever thought <laughs> people would still be thinking he was that guy. I think he, I think that character will be forgotten so quickly uh, that it'll we, we will look back on it and think that we were crazy to even imagine it. Is there anybody out there who you think would even have been a close? 
uh, second in terms of, you know, when you're thinking of how do you replace Letterman or was, was he like your number one and there was no number two through 10? Yeah. I mean, he has, you know, John, John Stewart doesn't want it and he's never wanted it, yeah. um, in, in recent years. So he's, people always bring his name up, but they just forget that he doesn't want it. Yeah, Maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. But, maybe 10 years ago. He just, he's he like doesn't the, need it. He's like the King and he makes a lot of money and he's going to produce whatever show follows his show, presumably after Colbert leaves. I mean, he's, he's got a good. Yeah, and he's you know there is there's there's and he's his own qu- kind of quiet guy, and I think that you put I think you put Stewart in a place where he's got to interview celebrities that he doesn't want to interview, and right. he's not happy. So I think he's perfectly you know fine where he is. Whereas Colbert, it's such a great opportunity for him. Yeah, I didn't think that there. See, my worry was okay. In my mind, I would have loved a like sort of an out of the uh, you know out of left field kind of pick like Aisha Taylor. I think. Uh, uh, Tyler, I think she would be amazing, and I and I, I hopefully I hope that she either gets the slot uh, after uh, the Daily Show, and that Comedy Central reaches out to her, or or because I'm beginning to think that uh, CBS is going to pull the plug on Ferguson, so there's there's that possibility that right. she could move into something there. But prior to that, I was like, okay, who do you get to actually fit the slot? I mean, people kept saying. When I was on Twitter, the thing that popped up, it was always like John Stewart or Tina Fey. They don't want that job. No. It's a step down for them. So, you know, if you, my worry was that CBS desperately needs to go younger in that 1130 slot to compete with Kimmel and Fallon. And I thought they were going to blow it by going too young or trying to be too hip or just kind of making a mockery of it and then making the wrong choice. Um, so I have no idea who they who they would have gone with. I think that maybe Chris Hardwick probably would have got a call. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's probably a few uh, stand-up comics that might have got a call, but uh, clearly Colbert was the one. Yeah, in our uh, podcast last week with Andy Anaco, we, we, you know, he he brought up Chris Hardwick, and I, I thought that you know he's he's kind of new to this. He's done his uh, you know Walking Dead post game and some other mm-hmm. stuff, and then and and the Nerdist podcast, and now he's doing At Midnight on Comedy Central, and he seems like a really um, impressive kind of up and coming person. But he's you know Colbert has got the track record, and and is he can just walk in and do it. Whereas somebody like Chris Hardwick, I feel like is a not not necessarily a Conan O'Brien reach because that was way out there, but right, that's, yeah. and it took a lot of time. But you know, I, I'm in, I'm kind of interested to see whether Chris Hardwick keeps stepping up. And you mentioned Aisha Tyler; mm. she's so smart and funny and good that I, I think I'm with you that it would be really nice if something shook around here. I mean, we also talk about how they're all white men doing these shows right. and, and you know, you want to see a little more diversity and she is fantastic. So she would be a great fit somewhere, right? Is that, is that 1230 on CBS? Is that after John Stewart? I don't know, but um, I think that's a great choice. Yeah, I, I really hope she gets it, and I, I'm certainly going to sort of rattle the cans a little bit to keep. <laughs> I've seen you're already that. rattling them. <laughs> yeah, so I, want the, I definitely want that to happen um, because she's just so much more than. I mean, talk about somebody. I mean, if people don't really know um, how multifaceted and talented Colbert is, then they really don't know how how she is in that same environment. And she's, you know, she's got improv skills. She's really funny. She's got obviously a great voice talent because she was an archer and other things. Um, and she's just physically gifted as somebody who's funny. Um, she's lovely. So she's, she's, uh, easy on the eyes. And I think that people like her, uh, in the, in the same way that like, uh, they would like Fallon, you know, they would just come on her show and, and, and sort of like bask in, in, in her, but she has a little bit more sharp edge. So I think she's, she would be great. I hope, I hope she gets it. Hardwick, I think is, he's, he's, there's a future for him definitely, but he, it's too soon for him to take over the late show. There was, I don't think there was any way he would have been in the running to get it. Um, I was just throwing his name in there for consideration. Give just him to an interview. You. Yeah, I mean, give the him an Rooney interview. Rule. Because, right, because, yeah, the Rooney Rule. <laughs> if it's not the Rooney Rule, then it's just like you want to get a sense of, like, can, can he, you know, can he be a head coach in the future? We'll make yeah. him the coordinator now, but can he be a head coach in the future? Uh, and you only find that out if you if you put him through the through that interview. But I, he's, he's certainly, you know, it, he certainly would be in contention, I think, for, uh, you know, if they dropped, uh, if they dropped Ferguson, I, I could see his name in, in, uh, in the mix for that. Uh, if they don't do Aisha Tyler, but um, yeah, it's it's such a small pool of people who actually can pull off this job. It's a tough set of skills, right? It I mean, really you, is. Yeah, 
It's not. I mean, and if you are Tina Fey, right? You you then you're beyond it because you like you can control your schedule and you can write your screenplays and you can develop your TV shows and you can act when you want to. But below that, you know, below that, calling your own shots, entertainment figure. This is a good job. It's just you gotta you gotta want to be in the you know work a work week and you know every week and that gives you stability, but it also means you gotta be there the whole time. Uh, and then the skill set is brutal, right? Because you have to be funny and you have to be uh, interested in a lot of stuff and a good interview. And there, how many? I mean, how many people out there that we know? And you have to appeal to an audience. You know, there's that too. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that's. I mean, there's a very short list of people who you can think of who can do all of that, especially for one of these 11:30 network shows where the, at least the perception is that this is the A list. These are the very best at doing that. Yeah, and you know, people forget that. You know, we talk, and I've written many times about how it's all the late. You know, the sort of that whole late night war is so watered down now because you know there's so there's just so many hosts yeah but people forget that it it drives a ton of money that the those things make money um very easily those shows and they're still highly sought after for people to um for booking wars because they want to promote movies um definitely that's a big thing and shows especially shows for their own network but movies and shows uh and those kind of things really are going to always feel late night it's always going to make money but yeah as far as a, a skill set needed uh not anybody can just do that because you look i, I know that people uh, in that job are they have 10 people helping prep them because they can't read the books or they can't even you know that job is so demanding you can barely get out to actually see the movies you know that you need that's right. oh yeah right uh, paul rudd's coming on did you see paul rudd's latest film no i haven't had a chance to get out to do it right so the Maybe that they can do and take two hours out, but they can't read a book or or like if, if Ken Burns is coming on or something like that. You, know, you can't do, watch his latest documentary. They don't have time. So they need people who are going to prep them. Whereas Colbert, in, in a lot of ways, he's his own he's his own like staff. That guy is so yeah. voraciously he's got his own database. In yeah, his brain. right. Exactly. You know, from from wired cover to, uh, you know, we know that he's a smart guy. And so he does his own uh uh, he does his own research. He, he'll be great. Um, I, I wanted to mention something about Aisha Tyler. She people don't know this either. She was one of the guest hosts when Roger Ebert was ill, and they were doing fill-ins with with Richard Roper on the Ebert and Roper show. She was a guest film critic, and she was great at it. And you would never know from. Uh, if you didn't know her from anybody, she, you'd be like, oh, I wonder what newspaper she's the film critic at. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, wow. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I, I, I endorse that, and I, I think Chris Hardwick's a good one. I like Craig Ferguson. I think he's doing a really interesting show. I'm sort of surprised that a network lets him do it because I just have a cynical view of networks. But it's like an untalk show, and it's very strange, but I like it. I, I didn't think there was any chance he was going to be on at 1130 anytime soon, but I like his show. It would be a shame if he – got sent away but that's a do we know if letterman yeah i assume that letterman's just gonna walk away and that his company is not going to produce although i guess letterman's company owns the name late show so i wonder what the t- business details are if letterman's gonna like own part of this or whether no, they are buying him out or what yeah he's not owning it um it'll be owned and produced only by cbs um, he's, they've negotiated the deal that he, that, um, CBS keeps the late show. Ah, title. Right. Um, so worldwide pants is not producing, um, the Colbert part. Right. And they and own, that, they own the Ferguson show. So that calls that whole, it, whole thing into yeah, question. Right. And you know, he, Ferguson, um, it's interesting because you've got, you had Letterman owning his own show up front and then you've got, and you had him owning, uh, you know, worldwide pants owning, the, the show after him. And so Ferguson, I just think that he's partly for what you said. You just, I mean, I like the guy. He's, he's very likable. The show is really interesting. It's kind of an unshow, like you said. Um, I think that if I had to guess, I would say he won't be there. His contract's up in, in like less than a year, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, he said before that he might retire when, when Letterman ret- retires. So I know that uh, people at the Hollywood Reporter are kind of digging into that, and because there's no other way to look that he got passed over, he wasn't even involved in the discussions. Um, so, you know, and I I read a response uh, on our site about from uh, Nina Tassler about his future, and it <laughs> and it and it wasn't the uh, the <laughs> the killer uh, endorsement, um, but it was definitely sort of. Uh, kind of a, with a response that made you go, hmm, that doesn't sound so good. So it, w- it was like, uh, yeah, he's our guy f- 
kind for of for now. We like right? Craig and are happy that he is on our network. Right. It was it was those we're, we're dealing with one time slot at a time uh-huh. we, when the opportunity was for her to say, oh, he'll be he's definitely going to be there. We love him. That response did not come from her. So that immediately sent red flags up for me. Right. And I, I think that because they don't own that slot that, that Letterman does, I think that that pretty much kills it. And then they can, you know, they know that they need to groom somebody whether it's, you know, a Chris Hardwick type or an Aisha Tyler, they need to groom somebody in that slot, um, just like Seth Meyers is being groomed over at uh, NBC. So, right. yeah, I, I don't see – and, you know, Craig Ferguson's not young either, so I think that they're, they're going to take that real estate back. Is there any – do you have any thoughts about um, who might go on – after John Stewart, because that's a, turn, turned into a really great hour long, and now it's practically a ninety minute long with the Hardwick show block for Comedy Central as you know their their own late night programming uh, powerhouse, and now they're going to have an opening after Stewart. Do they do they find somebody? Boy, the John Oliver timing couldn't have been worse, right? <laughs> right. But you know, I, I've seen some people say, oh, you know, I bet John Oliver wish he would have stayed around for another. But, you know, I don't I think he's happy where he is. You know, I, I you know, it's it's a pretty nice life working for for HBO and doing a show once a week. Uh, you know, would he want to probably be on every night? I know in his motor, he probably would be. But I don't think he missed any any uh, thing that he's going to regret. He's got a he'll have a nice job. And that starts at the end of April. But, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I Like I said, I think that my vote would go immediately to Aisha Tyler. But they could do anything. You know, I've, I people say, what about Samantha B? I think that I think that Comedy Central knows that the next step it, it, it has to be a woman. I would be really mm. surprised if it wasn't a, a woman. And I I just think that you know you're you're killing fifty percent of your audience if you just keep this kind of you know the, the white man's club. Right. If you keep yeah. that club up, you keep that wall up. You're just locking out half of your audience. So I keep uh, pe- pe- hearing people talk about Chelsea Handler because I guess she's leaving E. I was never a big fan of hers, but even if you're not a big fan of her in particular, you got to admit that. You know, having her be a host of a show, you you realize, oh yeah, there is a complete perspective lacking from most of these shows, right? Right. I I I, ne- I don't think she was ever in the discussion for CBS, although apparently she's been on the record as saying <laughs> that she was. Uh, <laughs> but uh, sure, you know, why not? Who doesn't do that? Of course, you know. He was like, yeah, of course, I'm being courted. I was actually in the running for that. I job. left a message on Less Movies answering machine, <laughs> and that counts. Yes, that I was available. Um, but, you know, I don't see her getting the nod over, you know, one of the people who was more in-house right. um, at, at Comedy Central. But uh, sure, I mean, you can't you can't rule her out. She does have a pretty lively audience that would follow her. But it's got to be somebody, you know, it's got to be somebody female, I think. And, and not just to, I don't, and I don't say that to like fill a quota, but um, it just it, it seems like of all CBS would be much less likely to do that at 1130. I could see them doing it at 1230. But Comedy Central would be they they could be the ones who would just say this doesn't bother us at all it's not a thing and we're going to find somebody a woman who's funny and 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 fix it. For more podcasts like this, visit theincomparable.com or search for Incomparable on iTunes.